Welcome to Mouseketeer Spotlight, the 65th anniversary Diamond Edition, remembering the original 1955 cast. I'm your host, John Marshall. It was 5 p.m. on October 3rd, 1955, when Walt Disney introduced his Mouseketeers to the world. And now let's start with the leader of the club, the Mouska Dad, Jimmy Dodd. Born March 28, 1910 in Cincinnati, Ohio. It was Mickey's club and Walt's studio, but it was Jimmy's show. He was the indispensable cast member who tied everything together day to day, season to season. A longtime actor and songwriter. He was originally hired to write the songs for the show. Jimmy's father was a salesman in a music store which gave Jimmy easy access to instruments and scores. Jimmy wrote all the musical numbers, including the Mickey Mouse Club March, Fun with Music, Talent Roundup, just to name a few. Jimmy's deep religious faith made him a perfect mentor for all the kids on set. He was a compassionate friend and a man of positive moral values. Jimmy died of cancer. He was only 54. <laughs> Here comes the circus, everyone loves the circus, and that includes the Merry Mouseketeers. Clowns in the circus, keep the frowns from the circus, as the old calliope rings in your ear. There'll be lovely harem dancers and those wires on trapeze, and there are two weightlifters who lift anything with ease. So hooray for the circus, away for the circus, you're the guest of the Merry Mouseketeers. Now let's meet Roy Williams, the Big Mousketeer. Roy was a gag man and cartoonist. Roy actually could do a little comic acting. In the later seasons, he appeared in as many skits as Jimmy, though he stayed clear of the song and dance numbers. Roy's illustrations would occasionally grace Jimmy's Dottisms and the Mouska Fables. When the show went off the air in 1959, Roy stayed on and resumed his regular duties. Roy retired in 1970, but continued to hang around the studio in Disneyland until his death on November 7, 1976. Mouseketeers roll call, count off now! Karen! Cubby! Doreen! Mommy! Darlene! Dennis! Cheryl! JJ! Karen Pendleton, The Phoenix Karen was an amateur performer at the show's beginning. She was a natural good singer and dancer. She made a big enough impression on the producers and remained on the red team for all three filming seasons. Karen was only one of nine Mouseketeers that was on the show its entire original run. Season one, Karen was teamed up with little Johnny Crawford, then with Cubby O'Brien for the final two seasons. As the show came to an end, so did Karen's career. Karen was offered a contract continuation by Walt Disney, but her father decided against it. Karen actually didn't enjoy acting, just the singing and dancing part of it. She found going to auditions to be very stressful, and returning to public school was extremely difficult for her. Being a very sensitive and shy child, she became a victim of bullying of her Mouseketeer days. In 1983, Karen was a victim of a near-fatal car accident that left her paralyzed from the waist down. 
In 2004, she appeared with several other Mouseketeers in an interview with Leonard Moulton for the Disney Treasures DVD release of the Mickey Mouse Club collection. In 2015, Karen received a Mouseker for the show's 60th anniversary, although she didn't make an appearance. Karen passed away on Sunday, October 6, 2019, leaving behind a daughter, a son-in-law, and two beautiful grandchildren. Have Skins Will Travel, Cubby O'Brien Carl Patrick O'Brien, born July 14, 1946, was the youngest of three sons. Cubby got his nickname from his mother, who thought he looked like a little bear cub when he was just an infant. A talented drummer from a family of percussionists. Cubby began playing drums in earnest at age five while attending the Carl Babcock Music School in Sherman Oaks, where his father taught. He very quickly learned to sing and dance and was on the Red Team for all three filming seasons. Cubby was the only musician among the other Mouseketeers who was allowed to play on camera. In the show's first week, he got to play drums for Talent Roundup Day in a combo with his father Hack and brother Warren. Mouseketeers, I take pleasure in introducing Cubby O'Brien and company. And now meet my brother. One, two, three. got an opportunity to tour with the Carpenters. He worked professionally as a drummer his entire adult life. Doreen Isabel Tracy, The Live Wire, born in London, England. Doreen's bright, beautiful face and engaging personality gave animation to many Mouseketeer skits. She was an all-around performer, adept at dancing, singing, and acting. She excelled in displaying comical facial expressions that, though were exaggerated, were never overdone. Ballet, tap, and jazz were her strongest dance styles. Doreen could ad-lib effectively, and her strongest selling point was her unique, appealing personality. Doreen received her Mouseker Award along with many other Mouseketeers at the 60th anniversary celebration in Anaheim, California during August of 2015. 
After a few years of battling cancer, Doreen passed away from complications of pneumonia on January 10th, 2018. Next up we have Lonnie Burr, the intellectual, author, poet, playwright. Born Leonard Burr Babin in Dayton, Kentucky, May 31st, 1943. Lonnie graduated from high school at 14 and holds a master's degree from UCLA. A seasoned industry professional from the show's start. He was a lead performer on the Red Team for all three filming seasons. Lonnie was a smart, confident kid and his persona projected to the audience. He was the only male Mouseketeer the kids at home considered cool. Due to a rehearsal accident, he was not part of the filming of the third season Roll Call and Alma Mater. Darlene Gillespie, the Hard Luck Kid Born Darlene Faye Gillespie in Montreal, Canada, was an instant early favorite with the show's crew, who were convinced she would be a star. But circumstances forestalled this. An amateur performer at 14, she was a good dancer and blessed with an extraordinary voice, was in Roll Call and the lead performer on the Red Team for all three filming seasons on ABC. Darlene's was a precious talent, one that peaked with her first year on the show. Oh, I would like to meet a boy, yes, I would like to meet a boy, who'd come along and take a hold of my hand, and walk with me along the pike, yes, that's what I would really like, but I'm all alone at Coney Island. Step right up, folks, and win yourself a beautiful prize. She's all alone, poor girl, she's all alone, poor girl, she's all alone at Coney Island. Now if this gun were Cupid's bow, I'd pick it up and aim it so, I'd shoot a dart right at his heart, but my land, I have to earn my salary here at the shooting She appealed gallery. more to the adults so than I'm kids. She maintained a positive outlook through many ups and downs in her long show business career. Dennis Day, born Dennis Wayne Day, July 12, 1942, in Las Vegas, Nevada. Dennis was one of the first Mouseketeers hired and one of ten retained for the show's second season, and went on to participate in several artistic endeavors, including acting, directing, sculpting, and dabbling in the culinary arts. In July of 2018, Dennis supposedly left home to visit some friends. Unfortunately, human remains found in his home during the spring of 2019 had since been positively identified as his own. Cheryl Holdridge. She was known as the girl with the million dollar smile. Born Cheryl Louise Phelps in New Orleans, June 20th, 1944. Cheryl was a replacement who came on board the second season and was retained for the last year as well. She had a background in ballet dancing and acting. Cheryl made the Red Team right away, but seldom was chosen to give solo performances. At the conclusion of the show's final filming, Cheryl chose to give up show business. In 2005, she made a personal appearance at Disneyland for the 50th anniversary of the Mickey Mouse Club and Park. And away you go! For today is For several years Cheryl had suffered from lung cancer and undergone chemotherapy but finally succumbed on January 6, 2009. Yeah. 
years we'll all be friends wherever we may be. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes part one of the Mickey Mouse Club 65th Anniversary Diamond Edition. Please remember to like and subscribe and tap the notification bell icon to be notified of my upcoming programs. I'm John Marshall, and thanks for joining me. <laughs>